We are so blessed and so lucky to have Ori, Orly Erez Lakovsky here, the head of the Israel Religious Action Center in our midst tonight. Uh, she's worked for years, this holder of uh, the rights uh, under the bar, both in New York and in Tel Aviv and in Israel. Uh, for years, she's been working in that organization as the one who's gone to court and brought forth the cases to make sure that women don't sit at the back of the bus, to make sure that there might be funding for non-Orthodox Jewry in a state that funds religion, but decided not to fund the non-Orthodox, to stand up and be that prophetic voice. And just lately, she's uh, stood up herself to now be the head leader of that organization that's so important and so essential. How many of you have been following the news of Israel? Right, so that we have a chance to hear from her who has been helping also lead a response to what the government's trying to do right now is such a bracha, such a blessing. So I want to welcome to this bima, Orly, and thank you for your dedication and your work and your blessing for all of us. everyone. Good evening. It's okay. Um, our Torah portion, Tetzaveh, includes detailed instructions about the clothes that Aaron and his sons, the priests of Israel, should wear. The clothes which make the priests holy and through them all of the Israelites. Rabbi David Ariel Joel says that there are two theories about the nature of the holiness of the Jewish people. Either we were born holy and we will remain holy no matter what we do, or that our holiness depends on our actions. Our holiness does not grant us rights, rather it imposes duties on us, including the duty to act in a moral way toward the people around us. 10 days ago, we marked the beginning of the Jewish month of Adal, and in a few days, we will celebrate the Purim holiday. Rabbi Dalia Marks, in her book About Time, Journeys in the Israeli Jewish Calendar, talks about Purim as the holiday of joy. There are several kinds of joy, she writes, the deepest of which is the joy that comes out of doing something meaningful. The Israel Religious Action Center, IRAC, has been doing something meaningful for 36 years, working to promote justice, equality, and tolerance in Israeli society. I joined IRAC 19 years ago, and I'm taking part in struggles which are sometimes Sisyphean and frustrating, but which fill me with meaning and satisfaction. In the past 36 years, we have been working to promote freedom of religion and equality to the liberal streams in Israel. We broke the Orthodox monopoly and proved that there is more than one way to be Jewish. Our conversions have been recognized. Our congregations and rabbis now receive public funding. Our pluralistic Jewish educational programs are now supported by the state. Just this week, I argued, I argued before the Supreme Court in our Kotel petition, the Western Wall petition, demanding an equal and respectable place at the wall for all Jews. This is still not the case as was evident in the last Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh Adar prayer at the wall, which the singers have joined us. We fought against exclusion of women and gender segregation in the public sphere. Thanks to Iraq, bus drivers in Israel are no longer allowed to send women to the back of the bus as they used to do a decade ago in some buses serving ultra-Orthodox neighborhoods. Just last week, another case of ours ended in a decision granting compensation to a woman who was not allowed to board a bus simply because she is a woman. Thanks to us, flight attendants cannot ask women to switch seats because a male passenger refuses to sit next to them. Modesty signs, such as the ones that are hung in religious neighborhoods, are now illegal, and burial societies are no longer allowed to prevent women from eulogizing their loved ones or to force gender segregation on the grieving family. We fight against silencing women's voices. Our class action suit against a radio station which did not allow women to be heard on air was accepted, and the station had to pay one million shekels in damages. We also fight against the vandalizing or censoring of images of women in the public sphere, because we believe that women should have an equal place everywhere. We also say out loud that racism is not our Judaism. 
after long legal struggles, Orthodox leaders and rabbis who incited racism are facing criminal and disciplinary charges. Thanks to us, racist candidates were disqualified from running to the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, for the first time in 30 years. We have established a racism crisis center, which offers advice and legal aid for victims of racial profiling and for people who refuse service because of the race. We take to court people who discriminate others, such as our class action suit against GET, which is the Israeli Uber, which offers a mehadrin cab service seemingly cabs which do not drive on Shabbat, but actually it's a Jewish uh, driver's only cab service. Our legal aid centers for Olim assist thousands of new immigrants. And in the last year, we have assisted dozens of Olim from Ukraine and Russia fleeing the war, such as 14-year-old Anastasia, who is a great grandson of a Jew and therefore was not allowed to enter Israel and to flee the war from Ukraine until we helped her. Our Legal Aid Center for Olim also assists dozens of foreign women who are victims of domestic violence in their struggle to acquire Israeli citizenship after they had to leave their abusive Israeli husband. Thanks to our work, many of them have been allowed to stay in Israel and not to be deported despite leaving their, their husbands. We fight against extremism, bigotry, homophobia, racism, and misogyny. And now all of our values are threatened by the most extremist government Israel has ever had. But the good news is that most Israelis are with us. There is a vast majority of Israelis who support religious freedom, support women's rights and LGBTQ rights, even among those who voted for the coalition parties. When a few weeks ago it was published that the government considers changing the anti-discrimination law to allow people to refuse giving service to people based on their religious beliefs, there was an uproar among the Israeli public, and the Prime Minister quickly retracted. Most of our achievements in the last decades have been achieved through the court system, most notably the Israeli Supreme Court. And now the Israeli legal system is under attack. The government is pushing for a complete overall of the judiciary, in effect, promoting a revolution which will gravely harm Israel's democracy. Israel is a fragile democracy as it is. We do not have a comprehensive, rigid constitution with a detailed Bill of Rights. The government controls the Israeli parliament. The Supreme Court, therefore, serves as the only protection of human rights against the will of the majority. Now the government wants to uh, gain complete control over the nomination of judges, make it almost impossible for the court to intervene and strike down unconstitutional government decisions and legislation, allow the government to ignore the legal opinion of the Attorney General, and allow the government to override the court's decisions. In short, there will be a situation where no, there will be no protection for minorities and for human rights. Dr. Christine Henriksen Garraway explains that the high priest's breastplate mentioned in our weekly Torah portion was called the breastplate of judgment, Choshen Mishpat, because it atoned for incorrect judgments. She writes that mistaken judgment sullied the sanctuary and required atonement. The breastplate of judgment did the trick. However, after the destruction of the second temple, the breastplate was lost. The Jews could no longer rely on such an accessory to atone for incorrect judgments. So they created an elaborate judicial system so that miscarriage of justice would be rare. The rabbis set strict criteria as to what, uh, who could qualify as a judge. Judges must be of the highest moral character. Judges are partners with God in creation for by means of a true judgment, they uphold the world. The legal system envisioned by the rabbis to replace the priest's breastplate, the Choshen Mishpat, was designed with the intention of providing a fair legal process in keeping with the biblical injunction, Tzedek, Tzedek, Tirdof, justice, justice you shall pursue. The current revolution promoted by the Israeli government will not secure a just system, but rather the opposite. But according to recent polls, a majority of Israelis is, are against the revolution including people who voted for the government. We are fighting the legal revolution on all fronts, in the Knesset, in the media, and in the streets. We attended countless, countless meetings of the Constitution, Law, and Justice Committee in the Knesset. 
we initiated a campaign under the slogan, Defending Democracy in the Name of Judaism, offering a humanistic alternative to the extremist and racist version of Judaism that the government is espousing. We are praying with our feet, as Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel said, attending numerous protests all around Israel, holding Havdalah ceremonies on Shabbat just before the protest begins. The awakening of so many Israelis who became political activists in the current situation is uplifting. We attended the largest protests Israel has seen in decades. It is moving to witness the energies of the crowds and to be part of hundreds of thousands of Israelis who deeply care about Israel and about the values of equality and dignity for all. Not only hundreds of thousands of Israelis voiced their opposition to the dangerous initiatives, many liberal Jews outside of Israel are concerned and wish to take action. In an email campaign we initiated a few weeks ago, more than 12,000 emails have been sent to the Israeli Prime Minister, to the Justice Minister, and to Israeli embassies and consulates around the world. Let me tell you, your voice matters. It is not only your right, but it is also your duty to raise a voice to keep the Jewish state a democracy. Just last Shabbat, uh, Rabbi Rick Jacobs, the president of the URJ, attended the central protest in Tel Aviv. He gave one of the speeches, and when after he finished the speech and I walked with him out of the demonstration, many Israelis stopped us and told him, thank you, thank you for the important words you say. They mean so much for us Israelis to hear the support of liberal Jews outside of Israel in the protests against those dangerous initiatives. Our portions begin, portion begins with the Ner Tamid, the sanctuary lamp which is lit constantly in synagogues. Those are dark times in Israel, but Iraq together with many Israelis, and many of you, like you, are the light which stand guard for the value of justice, equality, and tolerance. Together with you, we can spread the light and fight the darkness. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah.